Hello everyone, thank you for coming back and visiting my channel. My name is Teresa with Perfectly Imperfect Designs. Today I'm going to be making an Easter wreath. And I have this 8x6 sign. Hopefully the camera's picking that up pretty good. I also have it in a 9x7. The ribbons I'm going to be using today are the 2.5 inch yellow. And the 1.5 inch Easter Bunny ribbon along with two and a half inch pink and the yellow Easter egg ribbon. The truck has Easter eggs in the back as well as the bunny bum and the pink bow. I have my sign prepped and ready to put on the wreath when we get to that point. I'm going to be doing ruffles today. I'm going to be doing ruffles and I'm going to be adding a curl. Um, I'm only using a 12 inch wreath frame today. You can find these at Walmart. Uh, the Dollar General is where I get a lot of mine. <clears throat> I have 12 pipe cleaners on the outside of my wreath frame and 6 on the inside. My ruffles are cut to 20 inches. Hold on, i got to fix my mat a little bit. Okay, my ruffles are cut to... 20 inches. My curls that I'm going to be adding into every ruffle is cut at 10 inches. Anywhere from 8 to 10 inches. And I'm simply going to add a curl in every time I put a ruffle in. So let's get started. So I'm just going to take my mesh, lay it down, grab one end of it. I like to fold this under to get rid of the frayed edge. Go straight up the middle. Just try to stay in the middle the best that you can. I like starting on the outside of my wreath form. So I'm going to take this, place it down in here. I'm going to twist it one time. Add my, my curl. You don't want your curl super tight. Um, I just kind of loosely... This is fabric mesh, so it does fray a lot. Uh, you know, all mesh frays, but this frays more so than the other one, than the other kinds. Now I'm going to take this, pinch this in the middle, lay it down, and tie it up. All right, the next one. I have this one already made up. I always make up one in the beginning to see how it's going to look. And I open this up. Put this in. Twist it one time. Grab another curl. I better move my sign or it's going to go falling off the back of the desk just like... My ruffle did. Okay. Oh. Don't want to ruffle this. We want to curl it. I forgot. Put this down in here. You want to stand your ruffles up next to each other. So, see how this one's turn that way. If you stand them up next to each other, it's going to give you a ribbon and your wreath much more depth. Okay, next ruffle. Roll the end over, under. You know, fabric, fabric mesh, uh, a little bit harder to work with. It doesn't have a whole lot of body on its own. So you kind of have to create body with the other materials that you're adding to your wreath. Okay, this is going to go down here. Again, stand the ruffles up against each other. Grab one of my rolls. Roll it up. And place it right down inside the pipe cleaner. Now, I could go ahead and add my ribbons right now, 
But since I usually fast forward a lot of that, I'm just going to wait until I get to them. That way I don't have to worry about everything, you know, just being crammed into the, the tie. I like doing it one layer at a time, but, you know, with ribbon. As far as the mesh goes, I think this is the easiest and quickest way to do it. Okay, next ruffle. We're going to do a few more together, and then I will complete the outside of the wreath frame. And... Of course, I'll meet you back before I go into the middle. We're going to do a couple more together. Stick this one down in here. Grab one more. Add this one in. Stand up your ruffles. We just want to try to go back and stand up your ruffle before you go on. So that's what we have so far. And the green really complements the sign. Or the sign complements the green, however you want to look at it. I do have the sign and the ribbons available in my shop and that link will be down below. Grab a yellow curl, curl, roll, whatever you want to call it. I call it both. Okay, got those in. Stand up the sides. Okay, this is what we have so far. I'm going to continue going around the bottom or the outside of the wreath form not the inside and I will meet you back here when I get done with the outside perimeter of the wreath. So let's go. Okay, you guys have completed the outside of the wreath all the way around pull this up a bit so now I have six ties on the inside I'm going to move to those so I pretty much do it the exact same way or I do do it the exact same way. Take my 20 inch piece of mesh. To keep moving this over. The bigger the wreath gets, the less room I have. But that's just always the case. Okay, I'm scrunching this up the middle. This is just a basic ruffle. And I'm using fabric mesh. Take my ruffle. Set it down into the pipe cleaner on the inside ring tie it one time it's tight go ahead and try to fluff out your uh, stand your sides up it's easier if you do them as you go when you get to this middle because it can get awfully tight take a roll roll it up place it in there And tie it up. Next one, we'll do 
two or three together on the inside and then I will just like I did last time fast forward a bit and meet you back around before I start adding the ribbons this one on together I like to stop right before I get to this edge so I can just like grab a hold of it and tuck it under as well One time tight and things get really tight down in here when you start working on the middle <clears throat> take my roll and place it down in the middle of that ruffle And you want to tie it up. You don't have to tie it all the way because we still have ribbons to go in. Okay, I'm going to continue to make the ruffles, add the curls, and go all the way around to the ties on the inside of our Easter wreath. And I'll meet you back when I get done with the inside. underneath the bar the bracket pull it back up on this side tie it on tie it around itself then pull on it and do the same thing on this side now if I would have used a bigger wreath form if I would have used like a Dollar Tree wreath form I probably would have to use two pipe cleaners tied together I'm not absolutely sure about that because I don't know that the 14 inch wreath form has that much of a bigger hole in it now I learned this technique from Laura Jean if you know anything about wreaths you know who Laura Jean is okay then I'm gonna turn it over I've already prepped my ruffle to go in the middle so here's what I have. I'm going to set this down into the middle of my wreath. Turn it back over again. And tie this to my makeshift cross crossbar that I made out of the pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner broke. Well, can't do that. Hold on again, you guys. I'm going to have to go get a sturdier pipe cleaner. Okay, you guys, I don't have two uh, yellow pipe cleaners. I'm just supposed to be getting some today. I'm waiting for the mail to come. So I'm going to take two green pipe cleaners. You're never going to see any of this anyway. Tie it together. Twist it together. Um, now I'm going to have to fix my ruffle because the pipe cleaner came off. So what I'm going to do is just take this, wrap it around my whole ruffle, pull up on it, tie it on. I have that prepared. 
Now I'm going to take this and again wrap it around right at the cross back bracket. Tie it onto itself. here right across from it you want some tension on it you know you don't the whole reason for doing this is so nothing falls through the back of your wreath so you want this tight enough that's going to hold your ruffle that we're putting in the middle in place turn it back over here's the ruffle again you know sometimes that happens and the pipe cleaner breaks I mean you can't really do anything about it I could I guess I could have edited it out but I don't because things like that really happen okay tie it on cut your pipe cleaner Take this little bit, wrap it around itself. Huh. Okay. So now we have our ruffle in the middle. Go around, fluff up everything. Make sure your pipe cleaners are showing so you'll know where to put your ribbons. Okay, I'm going to be using the yellow with the white bunny ribbon. Yellow two and a half, the white one and a half. Hold it up. Down on the table. And set your ribbon down in there. This matches so well. It's going to be so Eastery and so springy. We'll get two sets in and then I'll turn it around and show you what they're going to look like. Or I should say one set of each in and then I'll turn it around and show you what it's going to look like. Okay, I have the yellow with the Easter Bunny ribbon in right here, and the pink two and a half with the Easter eggs right here. Do a couple more, and then I'll continue going around the bottom outside. Now, since this, these Easter bunnies are well, no, they're not all going the same way, but they are all right side up. So you want to make sure that your ribbons are placed in each time exactly the same. With your, make sure your bunnies are facing up. The top of them are, are up. All right, put this one in next. I just love the spring colors. I don't know about you all, but I live in Indiana, and it has been so cold and so much snow. And I don't even like to say that because I know we're not done with snow yet. We have a ways to go. It has even snowed in April before here, so. Okay. On to the next one. I also have some pretties to put in here after we get the wreath made. 
now with the easter egg ribbon it doesn't matter so much how you put it in because the easter eggs some of them are right side up some are upside down it just it just doesn't matter as much but if i was to put one of the bunny ribbons upside down um you would notice it because when when the naked eye looks at a wreath and a human eye well that sounded weird <laughs> when when your eyes look at a wreath if one thing is different it's going to stop right there because even if you're not thinking about it because when you look at a wreath you automatically your eyes go all the way around it okay we're on the yellow and bunny ribbon oh i must have dropped some ribbons no nope, i still got them over here Good thing. Make sure they're facing up. Scrunch this up in the middle. Put it down to the pipe cleaner. I have one more on the out no I have two more on the outside and I only have one more on the outside so what I'm going to do is complete the outer row of ribbons with you okay we have the outside perimeter of the wreath done with the ribbon so now we're going to move to the top so again I'm going to Start out with my yellow ribbon. Stack the one and a half on the two and a half. Fold it in half. I will be placing these ribbons in there a bit different. I did the ones on the outside. I mean, they're going to be placed in the same way, but the way that I'm going to have them spread out is a bit different. I think. Let me get to that point and we'll see. Okay, so what you can do on the top is turn your ribbons so that you have an X. Now that to me really shows the ribbon more because you're able to stand it up and pull it out a bit. Go to the next one. I don't know if you can see real good what I did to that. But here is the ribbons that I put on the top. They stand up kind of like a spider. Okay, the next one is going to be the pink with the Easter eggs. I think these are supposed to be Easter eggs. They kind of look like jelly beans as well. So, um. It's all good, regardless of what they are. Put this one down in here. Again, I'm going to be doing my ribbons a bit different. See, things get tight in here. But I, I want them to be tight so that everything has its own place and can stand up real nice. Okay, so again, I'm going to take the pink, turn it that way, pink, turn it this way, so that I have the X that I'm going for, and pull this back around. Not tight, I'm not cutting my pipe cleaners yet, because I have some little pretties we're going to add into this. I've pre-made the bow keep the video from being so long if you'd like to see a bow video um, I have a, I have a bow tutorials on other wreath um, YouTube videos if you would like for me just to do a particular bow if you could let me down, know down in the comments that would be wonderful and hey if you guys haven't yet 
and you enjoy watching this kind of stuff and learning, would you please like and subscribe to my channel and share it with your family and friends. That way, more people will watch my videos and more people will get to know me and therefore YouTube will notice me a bit more and that's very helpful. Let me turn this this way. There we go. The next one. Oh, it's not time for this one yet. It's time for the other one. Put this one right there. Pick up these. Again, I have the sign and two different sizes. All four of the ribbons. And my Etsy shop, link below. Click on that and it'll take you right to it. I have a lot of other ribbon and sign sets as well. These up like this. Now you can do your, your bows like that, your ribbon tails like that, or you can just do them the same way you did them on the outside. I just prefer this when I'm doing the top. That way everything is shown and nothing's really stuck, un stuck up underneath anything. Because if you've watched me before, you know that I just, I don't like for my ribbon to be, look like it's, the way I put it, I don't like for my ribbon to look like it's being strangled and it's trying to get air out from underneath the sign or the bow. You know, it just drives me crazy. I'd rather have my ribbon straight. Okay, I'm going to turn this one. And turn this one. And we have one left and we're done with the ribbons. And we'll put our bow and sign on. And be done with the Easter Bunny. Eggs and Bunny Reef. Or the Easter Eggs and Bunny Reef. Okay, we only have one left. We've completed all the ribbons. And I have pre-made the bow, like I said. Because... I just think it saves on time. I'm not in a big hurry, but I know that some of you are. And not everybody has time to sit and watch a super long video. So. Okay. Alright, we got the ribbons all on. Before I cut my pipe cleaners, I'm going to see, this is the bow, before I cut the pipe cleaners, I'm going to see about where I would like for my sign and my bow to be. But I do know that my sign's going on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and get in here and cut these down. So you don't see them sticking up. I still have the ones on the outside to cut down. That's just simply cutting off the pipe cleaner and pushing that little stem that's sticking up down. Okay, if I put my bow over here and the sign right here. Yeah, I think that will be very cute. So let me finish cutting these pipe cleaners off and we'll put the bow on, or the 
sign on. All right, I may go ahead and put my bow on first today. I usually never do. But I'm just wondering if I can get it on there and maybe it'll be easier for me to place my sign if I already have the bow on there. All right. Usually I place my sign first. Today I think I'm going to go ahead and do the bow. So I have these pipe cleaners on the back of it. I'm going to take my plastic yarn needle. These are very hand handy, especially when you have a real thick wreath. Because you can just go straight through the mesh. I think I want it about right here. And I haven't cut my bow tails yet. Get it out from underneath here. Okay, I got it on here. I'm going to try it. I'm going to tie it right to the wreath frame. Now those yarn needles, you can get those a lot of places. Any craft store usually sells them. Uh, Walmart has them as well. I just kind of make sure that it's twisted back here. Any which way to where it make you know, I feel more comfortable with the fact that it's not going to be falling off. won't cut that yet and of course we'll have to fluff everything up let me get my sign on before we do that we sign on before we add any of the embellishments I plan on putting on here Okay, I think I'm going to wait to fluff my bow until after I get the sign on because if you've watched me before, you know that I could fluff a bow for days on end. Okay, my sign is right here. I have pipe cleaners on it as well put on with these mounting brackets. You just go through there, you tie the pipe cleaner right to itself. I think I'm going to want the sign about right... Oh, I do have one more pipe cleaner over there. Let me hold it up for just a second. Okay, I want my sign about right here. So I'm going to take my handy dandy needle again. Bring it right down through there. You don't want to pull too hard on your sign. You don't want it to be smashed into the wreath. But you don't want it to fall off either. So, we get all four of the pipe cleaners pulled through. And then we'll fasten it down. Now, I don't know if you notice, but I do try to go around any of the ribbons that are happen to be in my way. See, I will reverse this one back because of the way it's laying in there. Which I'll show you that when we get in there. Okay, I have both of these on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it. Wrap this around here. Wrap this one around here. Twist.
may have it too far out on the side just have to see here okay I'm gonna go ahead and push these down through my mesh And I'm, again, maybe moving the sign before I'm completely finished. Sometimes I have to move the sign after the video. But you will see the wreath hanging on the door. You'll be able to see how I have the sign on there. Okay, this time I don't necessarily have to turn it upside down. Just going to... Tie it a little bit because I'm not so sure that's where I want it. And I think I want it in a bit more. Go ahead and tie cut this off. Like I said, I've got some embellishments to add, so I want to make sure everything is pretty much where I want it to be exactly. Let's see, I'm going to turn these ribbons and put them this way instead of crisscrossed. I think I'm going to move the bow in a bit too. Okay, so this is what I'm dealing with is this side. Which one of these it is. There we go. Flop up the bow. Still got to cut the tails. All right, you guys. I know I've already fluffed the bow and everything, but I've got to move this because it's driving me crazy. Okay, this is the right one. And this side pulled in tighter. And yes, I just smashed everything down again, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to fluff everything back up, plug my glue gun in, and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, I grabbed some things that I got from Walmart. These little bunny picks. I'm going to take them apart. And Easter eggs. Um, all of these were 98 cents at Walmart. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut my bow tails. Now, usually, I cut my, or usually I cut my bow tails and I try to curl the top ones. I'm not so sure I'm going to do that today. So, I'm going to cut everything shorter. And I don't want to cut them too short because you can always cut them back farther, but you can't add any on, you know. So I'll cut the very ends of them off before I do what I'm going to do to the bottoms. This is still a bit long. I'm just about to the bottom of the wreath. Okay, now I'm going to take my one and a half. Well, this one's already done. I'm going to take the one and a half, fold it in half. From the crease side, I'm going to cut down towards the wire, and that gives you your dovetail. So let me do these. 
and my two bigger ones. cut these okay now I'm gonna have to hold it up a minute and make sure I have the tails where I want them before we add anything else in it now I think that's good see the length of my tails now well it's hard for me to there we go. Back to that bow again. Okay, now I'm going to lay it here. I've already plugged in my glue gun. So what I do with these, you know, there's three on the pick. Price tag off. And then I just take them, spread them out like this and pull them down so they'll well that one came apart may have to cut these let's see okay here we go so i have two actually i have three because i'm gonna pick that up and put it back on the stem take my wire cutters Cut these. I think I want to utilize this little bit of grass on here. This sparkly Easter grass. And the way I'm going to do that. paper off. Okay, I'm going to cut this. We don't have several of these to go in. And I'm just going to put these in sporadically just to add some interest. So I put three in to start with. Don't know if I'm going to put one in my bow or not. I know I want one above my bow. So what I do Straighten out the wire. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a little glue on the end of this wire so that it will stay inside the styrofoam egg. There we go. I'm going to put some glue on the side that's going into the wreath. Just be really careful with your hot glue gun. And I'm just sporadically placing them everywhere. I like to use groups of three. Pull it out so you can see where I'm putting them. Okay. This one over here. Underneath this sign. Sticking out just a bit. I want to take some of this Easter grass, I think. Let me see. Yeah, might as well add what I have. Let me glue these back together again. Or no, I think I'm going to go ahead and add the bunnies now. So these are the little Easter bunnies I got. Do the same thing to these. Just roll it on back. So that I end up with three of them instead of just one. One. Two. 
and here's three. Now the thing I'm going to do different about this Easter grass, so I'm going to try to cut it at the bottom so it all stays together. I don't know that that's going to work, but we're going to try it. Just sit here and dry for a minute while I add some bunnies. These bunnies are cute. They even have a little tail on them. Put some glue on this one. Just right here, sticking out a bit. Major glue webs, guys. Yellow one. I'm not sure. I have more of these. I don't know if I'm going to add two packs or, or I mean a total of six bunnies or if I'm going to stop. You don't have to cram it all the way in there because you want to see them. Okay. Well, we don't want the price tag in there. I think I'm going to hold off on the Easter grass pieces. I may add some more embellishments before. I'm all finished. I may add them before I hang it on the door and take a picture of it. But for now, if I have enough of them on there. Okay, for now, this is the Easter Bunny Wreath. Let me back up a bit. Hey guys, I really don't want to be on camera today. I'm getting ready to do my yardstick cross video. So be looking for that coming up. I will get some photos of this. And if you haven't, please like, subscribe, and hit the notif notification bell on my channel. Um, I just reached 7,000 subscribers thanks to all of you. Thank you, thank you. Without you, nobody would watch me because YouTube won't put your videos out there if you don't have people that subscribe to your channel. So, um, after this video, you'll probably be able to find me on TikTok. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet, but we'll see. And I hope you all have a nice rest of your day, morning, whatever time it is where you're joining me from. And I will get some more pictures of this. Until then, have a good one, y'all. Bye for now.